Now I've got a pretty unique pattern for you today, and I know I say that all the time, but this one, it really is. And I've actually had a couple of requests for this one, most recently from Edward and Randy. The pattern is called the Pistol Pete, and there are several variations of Pistol Pete's out there. But the coolest part of the backstory on this one is that it was created in 1972 by a 12-year-old kid in Colorado named Chris Furia. He started selling the pattern in high school and up through college, and it really did pretty well, eventually ending up on the shelves in the Walmarts and Kmarts out west. Now here is why the pattern is so unique. It's got a propeller on it, and a lot of people do fish it under a bubble with a spinning rod, but a lot of people also fish this thing with a fly rod. And I know I will probably get some negative comments and a few thumbs down on this video. People saying, how could you tie this thing? I thought you were a traditionalist. This is not even a fly. And I hear you. If you're fishing this thing under a bubble with a spin cast rod, yeah, I would probably call it a lure too. But if you're fishing it with a fly rod, like a streamer, then why wouldn't we call it a fly? And I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on this, but either way, it was a pretty fun tie, and I'll bet it's gonna be fun to fish. So there it is in the vise, a Pistol Pete. And this one is a variation of the one called a Bumblebee. And I say variation because I'm tying it on a longer streamer hook than the ones I saw in the pictures. This is a size 10, it's a 6X long Limerick Bend streamer hook, and that's 2.8 millimeter bead. I'm not really sure what size that propeller is other than a small. Um, Wapsi does sell it, so they call it a, a fly propeller. So even Wapsi thinks this thing is a fly pattern. And I am going to use 140 denier thread. Let's pull that bead back. And what we'll do here, we'll build a little bit of a, a bump right here that the bead is going to sit on. And it's a little bit behind the propeller. It's okay, I think, to have this bead just kind of free floating up there, as long as you don't put so much material behind it that you you know, squish this propeller up there to the eye and it won't spin. So that's probably not enough. If I push that up, it would go all the way up. But what I'm gonna do and what I've been doing for the last couple is I get my position, you know, a couple extra wraps right here. And now I'm just going to take some wraps behind it and then maybe do a figure eight back over it like that. So I've pretty much locked that bead in, and before you go any farther, just check. Make sure it's still free spinning right there. I think we are, and we're good, so go ahead and take your thread back to the bend of the hook. Now the bumblebee does call for some type of red tail, and I suppose you could use about anything you want here. You could probably use a little tuft of wool, just you know, like a black-nosed dace, or some marabou. I'm gonna stick with saddle hackle fibers here just from a strong saddle hackle and catch it in right here and snip the front piece off. And since we're going with a yellow body and it is called a bumblebee, I'm going to use black here, a black rib. And this is just a standard floss. I think you could probably use anything you want here. But I'm going to double it over so I get two strands here. So it'll be just a little bit thicker. So go ahead and catch that in. Hopefully it doesn't go all over the place on you. And let's take some yellow chenille. Now this one's a medium. The one I had in the vise at the beginning was a small, and I think that might have been just a little too small. So we'll see what it looks like with the medium here. Okay, catch that in. Now take our thread up about two thirds, not all the way to that bead, because we are gonna put a significant amount of hackle up here. But go ahead and just wrap this chenille up with touch and turns. Okay, I think that's going to be fine right there. Let's catch this off. Couple extra wraps here. Now let's wrap this rib. And I'm going to counter wrap it, not really for durability, but just to keep these wraps from falling down there in the, the natural grooves of that chenille. Now, if you made a mess out of that floss like I did, just you know, spend a few seconds cleaning it up here. No big deal. Maybe a few extra thread wraps to kind of give us some area right here for our hackle. 
And I'm gonna go with a brown hackle here. This is just a dry fly hackle from a, a half cape. Catch it in well back here. We're gonna put six, seven, maybe eight wraps, I don't know, a good bit of it up there to that bead. And then we're just gonna catch it off right here behind the bead. So go ahead and wrap this up as many as you can get or as many as you want. Now, before we finish it up, just make sure it's still gonna spin okay. A couple wraps to lock that. Now let's whip finish it up here. And there we go. We've got plenty of room for that propeller to, to free spin right there. I think we got enough hackle on it. And I kind of like that thicker chenille for the body, but it's certainly a unique pattern. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.